I'm Lisa Gaidenshaw. I'm a Tlingit and Haida. My native name is Gachgun, which means Indian Princess. And I'm going to be talking to you about the Fog Woman totem pole that you see behind me over here to, to your left. So these are stories. This is how we are able to um, tell stories through our totems. Totems are also mortuary poles, celebration poles. And this one I'm talking to you about is the fog woman. And one day the chief was out fishing and he brought two slaves with him. They were out fishing and all they got was a couple of bullhead fish. So they had to stay out in the ocean and they kept fishing. So as they were trying to keep fishing, the fog rolled in. So they couldn't make their way anywhere and couldn't you know, continue fishing or make it home. They were out there in the ocean for hours, and then as time went by, this year lady appeared out from the fog that you can see down here um, on the totem pole. Fog woman rode up to their, to their canoe, and she's talking to the chief. She wanted to know what they were doing, and see the, the fog woman can see She told her that we can't make our way back home and we had to stop fishing. The chief didn't know that she was uh, magical. She had powers. So the fog woman asked if she could help them and he didn't know what she meant by that. The fog, um, the chief downtown on that totem pole is wearing a hat just so you know. So the fog woman had uh, flipped his hat over and started going in a circular motion and it cleared the sky. So I'm sorry, is the chief is the second figure on the totem? The chief is the top figure. Okay. And then down below him um, is a slave. There's two slaves. Ah, so that's what you were talking about earlier. Yes. With the, and then at the, the very slaves. bottom is the fog woman. So um, they weren't able okay. to get that much uh, fish at all. So the fog woman, she's magical. She cleared the sky to where they were able to make their way back home. The chief was quite impressed by her magic powers that he asked her to go back to the village with them and she yeah. accepted. So she's in her canoe and she's rowing with them and they get to the village and she pulled her canoe up next to theirs. So she looks in the canoe and she sees that he's only got two bullhead fish. And then the chief goes, well, remember I told you that there was fog and we couldn't make our way home and we couldn't get any more salmon. So the fog woman asked if she could be able to help them again, and this time the chief knew that she had magic powers. So the chief accepted and you know, accepted her gift. So she stood by the water's edge and she scooped up some water in his hat and she started stirring with her fingers. She did that for a moment and poured out the water and out came two salmon that she's holding over here. Now she has a male and a female. Now it's able to produce, you know, a huge salmon population to feed the villagers. So time went by and the chief and the fog woman got married and they later had two daughters. She also was not using her powers anymore to where she was uh, fishing and hunting just like all the rest and living their way of life. She became so good at hunting and fishing than her husband that some of the villagers were laughing at their chief. And you don't do that. So the following year, the uh, villagers were still laughing and she felt bad and she took the salmon with her. The girls didn't know what happened to their mom and then the villagers were also not getting any salmon. So their mom went, to, so the daughters went to go look for their mom and they found her and they said, mom, how come you laughed? So they, you know, she told them, well, the villagers, you know, they were making fun of your dad and he's the chief. The girl said, well, since you left one, you took the salmon with you. He didn't leave any for us to eat. So since uh, the girls went to go look for their mom, she thought about it and says, okay, I'll let the salmon come back, but I'll only let them come back once a year. Uh. <laughs> That's how we come up with our stories. And it's not that we worship them. People think that we're, you know, really religious people. We're, we're spiritual people. I'm a spiritual person. 